Hey everybody, welcome back to another live stream. Today, I'm really excited. Uh, this new photo we're doing is a little more in the world of like animation. Um, but it's uh, just a, a new photo that you guys probably already seen in the thumbnail. So, um, but I, I'm, I'm excited to be back. It's been two weeks, I think. Or since not last Tuesday, but the Tuesday before. Uh, I went to NAB last week, which was great. Um, I don't know if any of you uh, else of you guys got a chance. I know Ben went with me uh, to NAB. It was a great time. Got to meet up with some other motion graphics artists and, and whatnot. Um, but yeah. And then I missed BlenderCon. That was this weekend. I missed BlenderCon, which was unfortunate. Um, I didn't even know it was happening, really, until I saw some friends going to it. And I was like, shoot! I didn't realize that was this weekend. And then I went to go buy tickets, and they were sold out. Which is really cool that they did get sold out. Um, great on Blender for being able to sell out their events. That's always very difficult to do. So, um, But next year, next year, I will be on the lookout for the BlenderCon. I think Los Angeles is, is the... Uh, is the version of blender con that they're doing here because they have the one over uh cross seas and then they're doing the one now in los angeles as well but uh yeah maybe in the future i'll be able to jump over there i've always wanted to go i just getting all the way over to the netherlands is i feel like a task i think it's a it's a, it's a big task um but as you can see still at my room right now uh but um I think I'm going to start to permanently move everything over here. We just have to get all of the audio equipment over here. I think I'll, I'll by Tuesday, hopefully have everything set up. If it's not by Tuesday, by the next weekend, I'll have like my actual mic and everything rather than this headset that I'm wearing, which the audio I'm sure sounds terrible. But by the way, if there's any problems with the loudness of the audio or anything, just let me know um, and I can I can try to get that fixed as soon as possible. Uh, but without a further ado, let's look at the photo that we have here today. So this this photo right here is what we will be creating um, inside of Blender. Uh, I, I thought it looked like a really cool photo. It's just a mid-journey AI photo, but I was like, you know, it might be fun to practice some sculpting. I haven't done sculpting very much, um, to be honest. So this will be, of course, a fun little exercise and challenge. Um, but I think it'll be it'll be a good time. So I uh, honestly, I don't. People that know how to sculpt, do you guys sculpt characters into the pose that you want them to be, or do you make out a T pose and then move your character to the position that you really want it to be? Is is that what the trick is to po uh, sculpting 3D models, or is it? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I would assume that it's easier to do it in somewhat of a T or A pose or something like that and then get it to be the position that you want because in the end of the day, then everything kind of like uh, is mirrored and you can move the different limbs around wherever you want them at that point. But I don't know. I um, This is new to me. This is new to me. I've done some sculpting before. In fact, I think we did it on a live stream once. It was a little bit, a bit ago. It was the... Um, during the October streams, I did one that was kind of like a Tim Burton style thing. You make a T pose, yeah. Which, by the way, hey key sign, hey, uh, hey to everybody in the chat. I actually, um, I think the first chat message was sent by, uh, but that was at 9 a.m. this morning by R W P H H. Roof, is it roof? I don't know. It might be roof. Here it is. Uh, said that, but hey, everybody, welcome to the chat. Welcome in. Welcome to uh, today's live stream. And I, th I this will be a fun one. I've been trying to experiment with doing different types of stuff. And uh, last week we did the Matrix um, kind of photo. I might do some more movie uh, kind of stills, trying to recreate some shots from movies. Uh, that seems fun. But I saw this one. Um, on the mid journey it was like a, the mid journey general page somebody had created something like this and i was like ah that looks fun i i, I that looks like a fun thing to do and a lot of hand painting that's going to go into this because we have the the different scratches and fingerprints it feels very much like a toy character i love that and for still you could always pose the character and sculpt over it 
Uh, you can always pose. You can always pose the character and sculpt over it. I suppose that's what I figured I was going to do. Instead of doing a T-pose, I was going to kind of put him in the spot that I wanted him to be at. I might start with an A or a T-pose. And then um, once I get the general shape of everything down, I can then use the posing tools inside of uh, the sculpting to really get it where I want. You know one thing I just realized is I have this sketch pad right here, guys. And uh, it's not plugged in right now. So that's really unfortunate. In fact, actually, I don't even know where my cable is to plug it in. Um... I might be able to do it, but uh, yeah, it says T-Pose, Position, Sculpt once, and then fix the messy rig. I agree. I think so. You're right. That is actually probably the method in which we will do it today. Um, but how are you guys doing? It's been a, it's been like a week or two, so uh, what, what are you guys up to? You guys have any cool projects? I've seen so, a lot of great stuff on the Discord, which by the way, a uh, little shout out to the Discord. If you guys aren't part of the Discord, make sure to join. Link is in the description. You can find it on the video here. If you just scroll down, hit the more button, you'll see joining our community. Join that Discord right there and uh, share your work that you guys are working on. There's uh, you know, a lot of other great artists in the community that are sharing their work. And then, of course, it's always great to get good feedback. Um, help promote each other's work as well as far as giving good feedback and stay positive. Um, I always think that it's good to do a sandwich method when giving notes. It's like say something positive, give your constructive feedback, and then another positive thing. And then that way it's kind of like you're encouraging the person to create their artwork and uh, and continue, but also getting better at what they're doing. Because there's also the BSing in the industry of like, oh, well, we don't ever want to hear any feedback whatsoever. And obviously, there is always something to be said on pretty much everything. Um, so it's always great to get good feedback and then allows you to practice going forward on other stuff. But uh, as far as I, uh, things that I've been doing, uh, I got Aces to work properly inside of Blender, which there is a whole article talking about this uh let's see if i can find it one second um i need this let me i'm going to share a link with you guys the uh one of the things that's really interesting about the asus workflow inside of uh blender is that they had this interesting discussion point it was talking about how of course blender's internal engine is using a uh srgb linear or something like that i think it's 709 linear uh no it's not srgb it's 709 linear and um because it does that it's actually limiting your color gamut spectrums that you could possibly do to like a, a specific amount of color values it's like 255 or something like that um and of course because we are working in more of a linear world of uh stuff let's go ahead and just share this link real quick here this is an interesting uh, GitHub that's talking about the difference between using ACES configuration for Blender. And if you just scroll down, it's it's quite interesting. This shows some different options between the original Filmic option and then the ACES CG Filmic option. And the gamut of colors that you can hit with inside of the ACES is just so much more than what you can hit with inside of that 709 kind of space. Um, it also depends on what your RRT is. Now, I had to figure this out because when working with CG that's going to go to a compositor, such as Nuke, you want to make sure that your uh, color is matching perfectly. And one of the things that I noticed, you can actually kind of see it here. What would end up happening is I would render it out of Blender like this, and then it would get into Nuke and it would crush the blacks. And, I, and you guys have seen that every single week that I would be doing a live stream, is that I would get things where I think it looked pretty good inside of, Com or inside of Blender, I would take it to the compositor and it would just crush it. And I was trying to use our own configuration file that I had at work, but it just didn't work. It uh, would crush every single time. So one of the things that they talk about here is that the thing that you would have to do in order to fix this is um, you actually have to convert it with inside of Blender using LUTs uh, out of the 709 space into an ASUS. But yeah, give this read. 
um, this is this is pretty great. Uh, it's interesting to to see some smarter people than I at color management uh, figure this out and talk through it and try to make it a better uh, a better program, of course. But yeah, working in Asus is pretty industry standard, so I figured I would try to do all my CG work in Asus CG going forward, and then. Um, I, I already talked to my boss about getting proper visual effects plates for that. And I posted on our Discord, by the way, a little, uh, work in progress breakdown. Let's see. This is the, the photo that we had done here. And I had just dropped in some cubes and stuff. But this actually right here was interesting is I used Blender and I placed the actual uh, image as plain behind everything. So that way the screen refractions on the uh, sphere would work perfectly. Because uh, this is just, I think I put glass uh, for this particular shader. And so it would actually refract the glass from behind it. And um, that worked quite a bit better. And also, of course, you could see since I actually had... I don't have this scene on this computer. But uh, essentially, I just projection mapped everything onto actual 3D objects. And then I was able to use that for the kind of light refractions on the uh, cube as well as on the sphere over here. I added this cube in, of course, and that allowed for a proper kind of color workflow. And this color actually matches perfectly to the other plate if you looked at it on vector scopes between the two things. I did screenshot these, so I'm not sure. I know, uh, Victor, you were talking earlier about whether or not the reds match. But they actually do perfectly match. I, I don't know if maybe my screenshot screwed it up or not, but I also was... I did like a Windows Shift S uh, situation, so like the scaling is also different between the two photos. But I assure you, everything looks great on on that end of it. But uh, without a further ado, let's go ahead and jump into Blender. One thing that's pretty cool is once you do input your color management settings, you can actually see all of that stuff down here. This is now working in an Asus display device, as well as setting the sequencer to Asus CG. I think though the um, the real trick here is that uh, when you output it, you need to make sure that your color management settings down here, if we select, uh, let's say, OpenEx or Multilayer, I always override it and just tell it for the, uh, which you guys can't see, I'm sorry. I always set the output color space here to an Asus CG. I, I, I like to override it. Just I know that it does follow the scene and your scene settings here are telling it to be Asus CG, but for me anyways, with the test that I've done, I prefer to just know for absolute certainty that uh, this is this is correct. My old boss at a YouTube channel I animate for told me that the exact same thing about the sandwich method. Yes, uh, I mean, I learned that in college. Um, it's funny. I went to college not to be a visual effects artist or to work in the film industry. I went to college to be a teacher. And... Um, and I worked in like theater and speech and, and also computer science. And um, whenever we were giving notes to students, we were always told to give kind of like the sandwich method of give them a positive, something quick that's like, because there, there usually is, uh, sometimes it's a little harder than other times, but there usually is something positive to give back as a, to reinforce what they are currently doing. Um, and then you can give them your constructive free feedback. I also think it's very important to be constructive when you're giving your feedback, not to be negative. It, it can be very easy depending on how you word things. I've worked with clients before, and they and they don't understand that whatsoever when you're working with clients. They, they'll just come in straight and just be like, oh, this doesn't look correct. And it's like, well, what, do, what about doesn't look correct? Please enlighten me, you know? But then they also don't say anything positive either, so it's just... Essentially, they're just giving you negative feedback, and that never feels good. So I always think it's important to give proper feedback that will allow people to, uh, you know, understand that they're at least on the right track, and or at least they did something correct. It's it's for their mental health, <laughs> but also ending on that positive as well is very important because they feel happier about the feedback that you gave them, in which case they'll go and do that said feedback. And uh, I think that's why it's important to start out with a positive so that way they don't shut down instantly, give them a constructive feedback, and then end on a positive note so that way they're not walking away thinking, oh, he only gave me a bunch of negative uh, things to work on. Make it look better. Ah, of course. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't know that I was supposed to make it look better, but now that you mentioned it... 
<laughs> seems kind of important, right? Um, let's go ahead and set up our scene here. And uh, I find it easier to just line this up and then rotate on our 3D cursor. It's like, now that you mentioned it, you're right, I should have made it look better. I don't, silly me, I don't know why I tried to make it look bad in the first place. But, um, yeah, I think this, uh, this right here will be a cool photo to do. Um, I, it's a pretty simple photo, and honestly, I just mostly wanted to practice sculpting. I haven't done sculpting in forever. But it's like one of those things that I want to get more into because we had talked two weeks ago about creating a community project together. And I really want to do like a Pixar kind of uh, short film. If we did do a community short film, that's what I would want to do. And um, a Pixar like kind of style or, or whatever. It's either that or Tim Burton, dude. I love Tim Burton. I have this... Uh, Christmas project that I was working on that I do have a, uh, a script for already but it's more complicated and so I wanted to make if we did do a community kind of render thing together then I think it would be fun to do something a little bit simpler that we can all just jump into I'm gonna just rough out this bed here doesn't quite have to be perfect it's just you know we're just lining everything up I saw a post somewhere about the 3d uh, fan-made concept art of a Tim Burton version of Telltale Hearts uh, oh yeah send it over in the the discords I would love to see that Tim Burton man dude the uh, I, I just find some of the artwork that he created because he worked at Disney before he worked at uh, started doing his own thing and um, I just think it's he's such a talented artist I feel like though that's one of those things it's like uh, of course you can say that uh, I mean it's not exactly a hot take to say I love it when people say stuff as if it's like they're uh, oh breaking the mold <laughs> uh, to say that something By the way, Ducky, I saw a Ducky or Duck. I can't. I'm sorry if I got your name wrong there. Let me actually just. I know. Well, you're Lego Duck here, but I'm just trying to see if I. Uh, I saw your artwork that you posted in the showcase section. Fantastic work on that stuff. I did think, though, I was like, I, I had I commented on your. Um, on your thing i it almost felt like there should have been like another train that flew by like at the very end of it and then like once the train passed that dude's no longer there i don't know i've seen that in so many movies i feel like that's a very common trope of a scene to do but it's so funny because like when i watched it i was like oh i was really expecting that to happen in the end like the uh harry potter or well, I think it's it, it was definitely done in Harry Potter. I don't know other other films that it may have been done in. All right. And then just kind of honestly, this is pretty easy scene to rough out. It's just, you know, Mostly get in shape. We're going to spend the majority of our time today working on the character. This music right now sounds like uh, Poor Things. I didn't watch the movie, but I watched the trailer. This music is courtesy of another streamer. Sculpting today. Yes, we're going to try to sculpt today. We're going to attempt to sculpt, guys. It's like, what is this? Normally you just 
grab models and throw them in there. Which, by the way, I wanted to ask you, Ducky, do you uh, model the do you model the Legos yourself, or are, is that from like a plugin inside of Blender? I know there are several plugins that allow you to import. Um, they allow you to import stuff from, like the th Lego program, which I thought was pretty cool. So you then you first model inside of that Lego program, and then you import it into Blender, and then of course you can just uh, shade it yourself or potentially, um, yeah. I mean, there's a number of things you could do. What does a bevel modifier look like on this guy? And let's see, segmentations, we'll just add a little bit more. And let's also subdivide smooth everything on the outside here. getting a phone call from my brother again I, I swear he forgets that I live stream every single Sunday I don't know when I don't live stream on a Sunday but he forgets pretty much every single week <laughs> I live stream on a Sunday uh, it's really cool website called uh, Mega Bricks and there's a custom add-on that adds imperfections that are super customizable oh wow that's super cool uh, Mega Bricks I also think I'll use a uh, displacement on this as well. I mean, I think after everything, we'll just go ahead and add in a new material here. I'm not going to use an image texture. We'll just use clouds, I think. Let's see, do we actually want this before the subdivision? Potentially. Gives it more of that rough stone feel to the whole thing. And I'm going to use uh, another subdivision surface before that displacement, just so we have some more topology to work with. Great. And honestly, we're just trying to find something that just feels a little more organic. It's our uh, lonely, depressing kind of like bedroom that we're creating here inside of Blender. Um, I finally finished, by the way, guys, I finally finished a job this last week that took me two months to work on. So I feel like it was the longest I've ever worked on a job. Although that can't be true. I think this is nice. I like this. Let's just go ahead and scale this part here up and then I'm going to create some bevels as well this is just kind of that it's like the mattress is sitting on top of the bed frame and honestly not that big and then I was at uh, NAB last weekend and I watched so many sessions on uh, Cinema 4D I have I am I am very validated in my choice of sticking with Blender I think it's just such a better non clunky software but one thing I do kind of want to work with is uh, I really want to see if I can get into Redshift that looked really cool I'd be down for that. I 
Mostly because I think a dream of mine is to uh, do a session for Maxon at one of these events. But I don't want to learn Cinema 4D. <laughs> I want to use Blender. So I'm like, hey, I could use Redshift inside of Blender. And maybe that'll be the solution. I'm going to open up an image texture instead of uh, using like a cloud material. And I'm going to use one of my Surface Imperfections packs. Which, by the way, you guys can find in the link description. Um, that's on my Patreon. So, inside of here, I do have all of these wonderful image textures. Which, oops, do I want to do 4K? I feel like I don't because I'm live streaming. But uh, we'll use 1K because <laughs> I don't have to worry about these. But these are seamless uh, textures. Uh, I've got a number of different ones. You can see cracks, dust, uh, residue, uh, scratches, um, stains, fingerprints. We're going to use this later to help dress up our main character because he's like a clay character model. And uh, But for this part right here, we're, we're just trying to add a displacement onto the, the bed. So let's see if I can find something that I really like. I'm going to use Dust 4. I think that should work nicely. And since it's seamless, we can make it whatever size we want it to be. But now, let's see, 0 0.01. And I'm going to take everything here, and we're just going to cube project it. I'm just gonna add a little bit of let's say negative 0 0.05 or something like that. This is gonna help displace everything a little bit more naturally. A shade smooth this as well. I mean honestly we could probably just uh, use a multi-resolution on this. Let's subdivide this a few times. I'm going to want to scale him up, too. He's mostly going to be sitting on this, uh, but I do want it to not feel so... I feel like it feels a little too tall, too rounded on the top. So what, you guys think that modeling uh, him in a T-pose is the best way to get started on that? I'm going to scale that up and just set that up. I think the T-pose is probably the best bet. And then from there, we can... I don't know about going to rig him. Uh, Hasselhoff, I think. Is that extra? We'll say that this is the back of the wall here. And let's grab this whole thing and move it. And there we go. So now his bed is up against the corner of the wall. Symmetric sculpting a lot faster, 100%, yeah. Honestly, we'll just take this whole thing and make it go up. Um, I mean, for right now, we're... Let's see, we don't need this right now. Let's see. Let's make it a separate kind of object here. And we'll just scale this guy up. We're going to deal with more lighting stuff later. But, uh... I think for right now that should be good. I'm going to delete that. And then... Let's create... I'm going to create a new collection that we will call... Lighting. And I'm going to take this roof here, 
Actually, we'll just call this flag. Yeah, I will say the pose brush, it works nice. Uh, auto rig is faster than posing the character with sculpt mode. Uh, well, I mean, I don't know. You're probably right on that. I think that my experience with it has been... Um, it, it works sometimes, but then other times it's, it's, it's a little frustrating. Okay. So there's our ground, which put in the main collection here that we can call layout. And then I'm going to create another collection that we'll call camera. And let's go ahead and take our actual camera, throw it in there. I'm just going to move that to the very top of our collection setup. Here we go, guys. Oh, we should probably save. Make sure to save, guys. Always save. I have such a bad habit of not saving while I'm working. I don't know at what point I started to get to that stage where I stopped like uh, saving every three seconds. It might have been when Blender decided to actually be good at backups and recovery and whatnot. But I need to get that back into my mentality of making sure to hit the save button every 30 seconds. Because it's always the worst timing when the autosave doesn't work. Okay, I think the other thing we could do with our camera here, I'm going to set the uh, viewport display. We set pass through to be set to one. That way we're only going to see what the final render is going to be. And I think the trick here is going to be, I think there's a few things. Let's grab this bottom. gonna make a another cube let's scale this whole thing down here and honestly we just line this up and there we go we got ourselves a nice leg And I think, uh, yeah, we want to do another bevel potentially directly inside of the modifiers. Probably not that many modifiers. Let's do like a five. And then if we can uh, do an array after that. And we're not really seeing all the way over there, are we? I guess if we reposition the camera later, we're going to kind of want to have that all set up. But yeah, if you use an array after that, we could just use another array after this. And then this one, we'll just put that as a negative value here. And then that way we actually have a completed bed. I like doing it this method because it allows me to make changes to one particular leg and then it will duplicate to everything else and I don't have to worry about, you know, where everything is at. Okay, if I grab everything up now, I'm going to grab it by the z-axis here and that's actually pretty close already. It was just driving me crazy that the floor was basically the same height as the bed. Um, okay, great. You know, I'm just basically not wanting to get started on this character because I'm already nervous about it. Let's grab... 
these faces here. And we're going to use proportional editing. And if I grab those faces and move them back, I'm just going to try to shrink this up a little bit. I'm just going to make this its own object. And then we can just extrude that outwards. Mostly just trying to create like this extra kind of like pillow uh, thing that I had going on here. Um, there we go. And honestly, we'll just scale that. I think also, let's see. Uh, tr -tr -tr -tr. Scale that down, and then there we go. Just mostly adding in the geometry and stuff. And once we place our character in, we're going to want a sense of weight. Right now, there is no weight to this mattress. It's all just pretty flat. But once we put our character in there, we can actually start to... To bend stuff more appropriately to what we're what we're wanting. So let's go ahead and save that. I'm gonna add a new collection in now and we'll call this our character. Uh, our flags though, we can actually place all the way up the top here. And I think we're gonna enable a few of these options with inside of our outliner. Uh, the flag is for instance this roof. Now what is a flag? In lighting terms, it's something that's basically a lighting effect that's off camera that you're not going to necessarily see i suppose it could be on camera but primarily when working in cinematography you're going to have an object off camera that's maybe a big black flag or cloth of some kind and that will absorb light from an actor so let's say we wanted to have a key light from this side but we wanted to have shadow on this side of the face just off camera over here they would place a black kind of like cloth flag they call them flags and that would absorb the light from this side rather than having some kind of reflection or bounce of some kind on this side. Um, so I like to just ha have a whole section here just called lighting. And essentially, if we press this button here, it turns off, uh, it only has indirect lighting. And that way, if we're in like render view, for instance, um, well, actually, I don't know if in render view is the best option to see that, but... Let's go to cycles here, swap that the GPU. Um, you'll notice now we can see through the roof and that's because it's only for lighting purposes that we're using this here. Whereas if I remove that, you'll notice that there's more shadow or, or less shadow inside of our scene. A little difficult to see uh, right now, especially since we don't have any lights set up, but it does cast shadows. It, it's great for uh, having a proper bounce i like to set this to whatever color we want in our scene and ultimately we're going to want to have a flag behind the camera as well because right now our scene is set up such where it's infinite this direction and there's basically like whatever light we have inside of our setup which is this kind of gray color we'll just boost that to white and you can see now it's just like infinite light whereas if we had let's say another uh plane back here which we can totally do right now let's go ahead and scale this guy up and then if i grab this edge here and extrude him on the oh whoops i'm grabbing planes let's grab this edge and if we do that if we place this inside of our lighting setup here we're not going to be able to we're going to be able to see directly through it but if i change the color of it to let's say black you'll notice that it absorbs the light even though it would be behind the camera which causes it to feel like we're more in like kind of a darker room um and that's really important is to be able to control lighting from the perspective of like using off-screen objects to essentially absorb light in different ways and so we can call this black flag or something like that. And whatever we select, for instance, our roof, we can select black flag. And that's going to absorb the light more from the top. Now, uh, vice versa, if this black flag was now white, you'll notice that more light bounces inside of the room. 
And so you can really control those values through kind of the intensity of what color you're using by off-screen objects. And uh, I mean, we're doing a black and white photo, so it doesn't matter. But if we did want to have some green bounce light, we could also place whatever color we want. And by changing the color of this invisible plane that's going to be behind the camera, it changes what the light re reflecting onto our environment will be. Um, and so that's just like a fun little trick to do to try to get the kind of lighting that you might need inside of your scene. So for us anyways, uh, we're probably going to want this to be pretty dark and uh, that way we can we can get what we're going for. Now the only problem is, is that when you're in solid view, it's going to have this plane that's just going to exist right there. One thing I like to do is to turn that off by going to viewport display and then swapping this to wireframe and then that way we don't have to worry about any of that. We could do the same thing with the roof as well. Any kind of object that's with inside of our lighting collection up here, we could just go over to our object settings, go to display as, which is behind my head right now, um, but you'll just have to believe me that it's there, and uh, we'll swap that over to wireframe instead of textured or whatever it's currently set to. Okay, great. Uh, let's go ahead and set in our character's body. Let's go ahead and get that going now. Um, I am wanting to see if we can get my... Let's see if this cable's long enough. I'm turning my camera. Whoopsies. I want to see if I could plug in my little sketch pad here especially since we're going to be doing some sculpting it's very useful to have a sketch pad to do so just drop my pen i got myself an xp pen uh well i got it for christmas one year all right guys we are professionals Gonna have to make some room. I'm running out of room on my desk. It's okay. We'll figure it out. Got all of this extra junk. Okay. Now the real question is, I got cables running over everything now. What object do we start with? Everyone I feel like starts with a UV sphere. So that's what I'm going to do because I don't know if that's proper or not to do. But as far as looking at his body goes, I think that it matches more to a sphere than anything else. So let's go ahead and just use that. I'm also going to jump in. We're going to add a new modifier. Add in a multi-resolution modifier. And let's go ahead and subdivide once. Let's go to sculpt mode. I pulled up the photo over here so that way at least I've got like a reference as I'm working on this. Um, and yeah, let's, let's mess around. I need to probably eventually go into my settings to make, cause like right now I can go to all three screens with this and I only want to focus on this screen over here, but uh, it's okay. Let's use the grab tool. Oh, I don't have my XP pen setting set up. Let's uh let's figure this out before we go into this. Might not be able to. It's fine, we'll use this for today. I'll I'll figure out the pen situation next time, guys. I'm just going to mostly get the, the shape of his body down first. Probably want to deflate this on the sides. We could smooth everything else out in a bit.
probably have to smooth everything out after this, but uh, mostly just trying to get his general shape down. I'm also going to uh, turn off... See, so I'm going to throw him inside of character, and then our layout, I'm just going to turn the layout off. So that way I can rotate around a lot easier. Just smooth this. It's probably an easier way to go about deflating him. So I'm using my mouse to sculpt instead of the pen. Yes, I am. Good old mouse. The mouse does the trick, man. You don't need a you don't need a pen to, to sculpt. Mostly just going to try to get the overall shape correct before we go into another multi res like subdivision. And uh then we can add in some more details and whatnot. I also need to overall get his arch of his back to be a little bit more accurate. Ideally, just trying to grab him and I need to figure out what the shortcuts are for this, uh, the different tools inside of sculpt mode. But yeah, I mean, just kind of placing him correctly. Yeah, who said you needed to have a whole pen and stuff? I mean, I saw some pretty cool pen tablet stuff at, at AB that was like, oh man, I really want to mess around with those. But also, they're so damn expensive. I suppose if that's like your whole job, then I could see how a little different. But uh, I don't know, man. It's like, Asking for like multiple thousands of dollars for like a single pen. It seems a bit excessive to me But uh, hey to each his own right All right um, You know what I don't actually know how to do is I got his torso to be correct uh, Well, you know the lucky thing I got here is that these are all different joints, so haha, <laughs> I get to do it with multiple different objects rather than uh, extruding or something like that from the single sphere that I added. Let's go ahead and subdivide one more time. I'm going to also now go in here and do some smoothing. Because the other thing we're not going to be doing today is retopologizing. We don't do that on live streams. Although I do need to figure out, I know there's a new tool to multiple smear. It's basically I need to remesh this section here. Uh, for the basic shape edges is voxel remesh. Yes, voxel remesh. Where is that? That's what I'm looking for, particularly right now. Dinah to apologize. I don't know. Top right under remesh. Top right. Oh, remesh up here. Uh oh, I think I did something. I don't know what I did, but I did something. I think I screwed something up, guys. We'll smooth it all out, though, because I think I just... <laughs> I pressed the Dino to apologize uh, button, and that just uh, blew everything up. It's okay. And then Control-Z, of course, got rid of all my work.
It's fine. It's okay. We need the practice. It's one of those things. Need the practice. Give me practice. Maybe I'll get better. And we use the uh, blob tool. Let's go ahead and inflate the top a little bit more. Top right under remesh. I see it. I'll have to grab that and try control R for remesh. I'll check it out. I'm down for anything, guys. Control R. Control R did not work for me. Remesh, voxel size. Uh, now, is this the entire... I think I understand. So if I go to remesh, voxel size, voxel size, size of the voxels in an object space used for volume evaluation. Lower values preserve fi finer detail. Okay. Adaptivity. Reduces the final face count by supposition. Do not need it. Triangle and Very cool. Uh, well, that's grayed out right now. Do I need to be... Well, obvious... <sighs> what I do? I think I screwed up, guys. Why is it doing that? What did I do? I think I screwed something up. Well, here's also another remesh option. I think I broke it. Go back to object mode. Delete that. I'm going to re-add a sphere. Because <laughs> I think I broke the other one. And then let's add a multi-resolution into this guy. Subdivide him. I think I broke the other guy. Did I mess up the axis? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, let's see. Let's go back to sculpt mode here. We're going to do this better than we did last time anyways. Just kind of get the overall shape and size correct for his torso. Uh, uh, Multi-res is so destructive. I would use multi-resolution for higher details like uh, pores and also an array topology mesh. Hello, today is sculpting live. We're going to try to. But welcome to the chat, by the way. Yes, we are sculpting a scene. Um, let's see how this goes today. So far, so good. We're using a mouse. A regular old mouse. Who needs... Yeah, who needs a freaking... Let's do that. I'm going to smooth everything out here. I just... Uh, I've seen a lot of sculpting from, like, ZBrush and whatnot. And in there, they will de certainly use a kind of a remesh option, like a Dymo remesh or something. And it works so nicely because you're just basically selecting the area in which you want the remesh to happen in rather than it being like an overall for your entire scene. Uh, blocking the character with simple geometry and then remeshing it might be an easier starting point. That's probably fair. Let's get like an overall kind of just shape first. I was going to try to fix just the torso, but you're right. Let's, uh, let's work on one thing at a time. Thinking overall, it's just kind of getting this, this pot belly shape to go. And cubes are also better because you avoid those ugly tries. Is that... Okay, that's probably true. Because I was going to say, like, these tries are pretty ugly, dude. Oh, 
Brawl. Just gonna kind of get the shoulders down. His neck is also connected, so we probably want to do that also part of the same object. So let's let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll use the draw feature essentially just to pull out a neck. And then we can slim it. Probably add some creases in there, but overall, let's just grab that as well and kind of get the shape down. But yeah, once we add a multi res, we can certainly add some more detail into like different parts of this. Just overall, kind of get that to work. I mean, as long as when I go out of this mode here, it's not, oops, um, gonna just break everything. Wow, that certainly is gonna break everything right there. I think, what did they have this clay feature? What does that do? Sometimes I think it'll be a lot easier if I just did this with actual clay. But what do I know? The problem is the multi-res, I wouldn't use it. Well, everyone else I've seen that has done sculpting uses multi-res. I thought that was like pretty standard. Oh, that's so ugly. It's okay, we're figuring this out together. I mean, well, you guys already figured it out, but I'm I'm figuring it out. <laughs> uh yeah, I like that. And we'll just get the shoulders to match a little bit better. I want to smooth this backside here. Let's go ahead and subtract that in a little bit. Just actually add it in. There we go. It helps to certainly break these things down into manageable chunks. I think as soon as you try to model like a whole character all at once, that's where you can get in trouble. Uh, I do know this though, uh, okay, so, uh, you I don't think you want to use subdivide surface. problem with subdivide surface is that you can't get different levels for instance right now say I go back to my object mode here I can actually jump down in my viewport to back to the sphere so you've got like different levels that you can work with so as soon as I start to add more and more and more detail I can see those different things depending on if I'm in the viewport sculpt mode or render mode which is very useful Especially when working in larger scenes. Or if you're animating the character or whatever. Although I actually don't think you're supposed to animate a sculpted character. You're supposed to retopologize him. Which, hey, if you guys want to grab this model after this is done, you can go to the Patreon below. I'll upload all the project files after it's finished. I'm going to subdivide this one more time. So let's go over here. If we subdivide it one more time, we can then go into our sculpt mode again. I don't know that I needed to go out of sculpt mode to do that, but I'm just making sure. 
Uh, let's see. I want this shoulder to be drawn on a little bit. Just to make sure it's a sharp edge. I'm going to smooth this a little bit, but uh, this will give us a good starting place for what the arm is supposed to look like, or where it's supposed to go. I do think we should probably crease it a little bit. I do like pinch, but it kind of depends on what you're doing. I, I, I do think pinch works really nicely for this type of uh, edge, whereas crease would be more like... Um, like this versus this. And this is just going to allow us to have a little bit cleaner edge here. I, I want to create a socket as well. So just trying to create this overall edge to where the arm socket's going to go. Because we're going to put a sphere on the inside of this. And overall, I think that's getting pretty close to it. I just want this front edge to be a little bit sharper. And of course, as I said, we could we could fix all a lot of this stuff later. It's just overall trying to get the general shape down. I do kind of want to make sure this neck is a little more centered with its bent yeah and we're hiding those ugly tries by the way making sure no one sees those and then if we inflate but make it a negative number we could actually create our socket right now I'm gonna subdivide one more time Honestly, that's not bad for what we were going for. Uh, let's see. I'm going to grab the elastic deform and we'll just kind of make sure this is placed again correctly to where we want it to be. We're going to have to do the same thing to the other side of the body. Where is his... Oh, it's already lined up. But since I'm not doing mirror sculpting, I'm sculpting him into position. We're going to have to create a little bit of a sharp edge over here. Not much because it's away from camera. And honestly, we're not creating this for animation. We're just making a still render right now. Gonna try to at least make it a little more even. Make sure the shoulder length is about the same. And make sure you're saving while you're doing this because uh, that's no fun to lose your work. I'm going to use the uh, draw tool and again, or the inflate tool. Actually, uh, Well, actually, we'll probably want to crease it first or pinch it. Let's do some pinching. Where's my, there it is. It's like, where's my pin op pinch option? Come on, guys. Just kind of creating this shoulder here like we did on the other side. This one is away from camera, so it doesn't have to be as nice looking on the inside, but we definitely still need that shape of the shoulder.
That's pretty good. And I'm now just going to use that negative inflate to kind of make the socket. And once that happens, we can use the elastic deform to place it where we need it to be. Uh, what do you mean ZBrush is better at sculpting than Blender? Blasphemy. Those are ban-worthy uh, words. I'm just kidding. I don't think anybody would argue with that. And then now we'll use, go ahead and use the elastic deform to get the shoulder to be a little bit sharper at the top of this. And we could save that. But yeah, I mean, honestly, I'm liking the shape of this a little bit better. Just now we can position that a little bit nicer. <sighs> yeah, read apology was one thing that I never got into, mostly because I never did sculpting at all. So read apologizing something only makes sense if you're sculpting, I think. Although I guess it makes sense if you're doing like a crap ton of... Um, I guess it depends on what you're really doing. But for me anyways, I've always noticed that I, I well, I never really got into it. Always kind of wanted to get more into sculpting. It's just one of those things like, when do you need to use it? Well, for live streaming. But hey, nowadays, Blender is better for sculpting compared to its previous versions. True. So if you're comparing Blender to Blender, not bad. I will just say, I think it's like, remarkable how blender is a free software that to me is insane that it does as well as it does as a free software i don't know that we're trying to i'm looking over here at this photo here it's pretty pretty straight i don't need to have it i was doing like kind of like this pot belly thing but he's a puppet i don't need a pot belly And then the only thing we're going to want on the bottom is the legs are also going to have sockets as well. I think we're going to want this overall to be skinnier up here. Which we can... We're all kind of just grab this whole thing and just position the top of the neck a little bit better. There we go. I like that. It's turning a little bit. Let's fix that. Yeah. And then we'll go ahead and smooth this a bit, ever so slightly. Do we want more of a crease there? I suppose not. Although I haven't seen too many of you guys posting your sculpts on uh, in the Discord. So if you guys have any cool sculpts, I'd love to see them. I used to watch Zebras like time lapse of people sculpting. Ah, oh, so amazing, dude. It's like so amazing. The amount of precision that you can get on sculpting is just mind-boggling to me. Uh, oh, the raven was sculpted. I do... I, you know what? Now I remember. 
seeing your because you posted some behind the scenes i think of that Like the number of projects that I work on where I really don't have time to sculpt stuff, it far outweighs the projects where I would be able to do something like that. Which is more frustrating, right? Because like, I feel like a lot of the, the jobs that I end up working on, they mostly just want to see what you could do in the least amount of time. But you know, they always want it to look like you spent a lot of time on it. I just singe that in a little bit. Overall, we're getting pretty close, guys. Um with the, the torso before we move on to the arms. I think the arms will be next, unless we want to do the legs. Or we could also do the head. I feel like the head's going to be the last thing I want to do because I want to practice <laughs> on other stuff first. And then, yeah, I mean, obviously we'll go to... Let's just set that to... Three, so that way we can at least see all this extra beautiful detail that we added into her torso. Or at least the shape of it. It's not like we added a crap ton of detail. And uh, we need an arm. I'm thinking you said, let's try a cube. I'm down for cubes. Which, we're going to need to subdivide a few times. And that does give us already a, sh a circular kind of like socket. And we'll just work on kind of the section that comes all the way down to the wrist area. And this is in front of his body, so it's going this direction. Although I feel like... Yeah, so it's going to kind of... Go to this part of the body, I think. Let's do that. Just place the cursor down there so I know where I'm, where I'm going. And... Do we use the draw? Is the draw the best way to do this? Or I've been doing elastic D form, but I imagine. Just use the uh, draw tool and just keep drawing. <laughs> we'll fix the orientation of the arm later as well as... He's got some muscles. Which we can smooth all of this out, I suppose. And now, I think if we use the elastic deform, we already have a bit of an arm. We could grab this, and then I'm just going to have to... Ooh, so much cleanup's going to have to happen. Ooh, no. Kind of making sure the arm is in the socket. Probably have to... I think we could also probably use the mask tool. So that way the arm doesn't change. 
or at all, but... Okay, that's cool. And now let's do the elastic deform again. And Honestly, that's not... It's getting a little sharp on the bottom here, but... We're just placing that as a reference point. <laughs> Such a long, lanky arm. And let's see, let's place that back at the socket a little bit. We'll have to add some creases to make this look a little bit more like a circle coming out. Uh, It's a little better. Okay. And then. Can't feel as rounded as maybe it should feel more like a straight. Kind of get this whole thing. I'm going to straighten everything out. Feels kind of like a Squidward arm almost. I'm not going to lie. Like a Squidward tentacle. If you press control, it changes the negative so you don't have to click plus or. Oh, okay. Control. Gotcha. What if I liked wasting my time? What if I wanted to waste my time, huh? Okay. Nice. We've got an arm. And then, honestly, we'll probably just, at this point... I mean, we're still going to do more work on this arm, but let's go ahead and duplicate him and just mirror him. I think um, we're going to want the bend to be a little different. And then, of course, you know, his arm's going to, his elbow's going to kind of go back more on this side. But it's helpful to at least have this. And let's go back to sculpt mode here. So you said control. Let's try the elastic grab. Or well, let me just go to smooth real quick. You said control. Control is changed. Uh, wait, wait, if you press control, it changes to negative. So you don't. I don't think my control is doing that. I'm sure actually I could probably figure this out also through key maps. Uh, let's see, let's search for sculpting. Now, I'm not seeing the option here. Let's see. Expand, sculpt. Do I... I hmm. Yeah, because control's not doing it. 
press shift, it turns to negative. My shift isn't working either. Shift and control don't work. Alt doesn't work. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, I'm going to turn off my layout again so that way I could just see the arms that I'm working with here. Um, I'm going to subdivide this another time. And we're going to try to crease the bottom of this. Or pinch it, maybe. Let's see. I want to flatten it, really. That's, that's kind of what I want to do. They have a flatten tool. Let's see. And then if we smooth the outside of this, I'm going to take this and inflate it a bit. Uh, smooth has no negative. Yeah, it does. What are you talking about? It's right here. Direction. Are you not talking about direction? Uh, da -da -da. If you press control, it changes to negative, so you don't have to... Uh, uh, well, smooth totally has a positive negative. It's right up here. Unless this is not what your guys are talking about. But you know, maybe it's not. I mean, at this point, we're just, I, I'll be, I'll be honest because I don't do sculpting. I know a lot of shortcuts in Blender, but like, <laughs> I don't know any of the sculpting shortcuts to do different things. So if you guys have them, I would like, but the negative of inflate is deflate. Um, yeah. So positive, negative, whereas the smooth is like smoothing outwards or smoothing inwards that would be the negative on that unless you guys are literally talking about something completely different i am mostly just using this plus and minus button up here for all of my uh, things it's like i can go and singe this whole section a little bit And maybe smooth it out as well. We definitely don't want that bottom part to be smooth too much. And yeah, I mean, I think this arm is feeling a lot better. This other one back here, it's supposed to go backwards first. So I'm going to go back over here into object mode and we're going to select this guy here and we'll go to sculpt mode on this him on this guy wow I'm not speaking English again goes back And overall, we're just trying to get this last little section here to 
spin outwards. Which I think I messed up the arm orientation a little bit. Perfect. Now we're going to have to fix a lot of it. Oh, yeah. It's so noodly. Which, again, we're not seeing any of this, so it's probably not important. But, I mean, hey, I'm uploading it to Patreon, so at least you guys will know that the arm looked correct from the other side. We're going to have to inflate this whole section like we did before. So just, oops, grab that and just inflate it slightly. Actually, I think I'm deflating, aren't I? Here we go. It's a little... What? What am I doing here? I'm obviously doing something wacky doodle. Which we could just smooth that out. I need to clean up all of this. And then draw, I suppose, on the bottom here. Oh, wait, 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 the pinch is not the answer. I think the flat was the answer. Yeah. Just kind of getting the bottom of the arm to match the other side. In which case we can then smooth out everything else. That if you want to brush the plus activate it, if you hold down control while you paint, it uses... Oh! Okay. Interesting. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, uh, no, no, you're not bothering me, by the way. Um, it's totally cool. I, uh, l let me... I want to try that out. I, uh... I always love it when you guys tell me how to do something that I, I don't know how to do. Um... <laughs> uh, makes it a lot easier on me but yeah no bother whatsoever okay that's a lot better at least for the bottom of the arm there it's just a very it's, it's still very skinny so we're gonna want to make it a little bit larger which I'll use the inflate uh, button to do so which I don't understand why it's like inflating from one side and then it like makes it thinner on the other. That's kind of crazy. I don't understand uh, what I did. Okay, so maybe that's not the correct way to do this. We could do it a little more manually, I suppose. Which never hurt anyone to do something more manual. Trying to I really thought the inflate was the answer. I'm 
then we just smooth it out a little bit after that. I do, I guess, need to flatten the bottom again. And then one more smooth pass, I think. Buys that for us. Okay, great, guys. We're getting really close, at least, with the arms. I do think this is where, I, you know, I'm just not as familiar with the different sculpt tools, but I've always wanted to get into this. I always wanted to try to make some more characters. I, I tested out, like, a few months back a different character that I had created, like a Tim Burton-style sculpt, and that was so much fun. I do feel like you spend the majority of your time sculpting though, so you want to do like simpler scenes, especially since we're trying to get so much done in like one week. I do admire other YouTubers that can spend weeks on one project. Sometimes I want to do that, but my ADHD brain's like, no, you must finish today. I'm going to just smooth this guy out a little bit. He's got such a weird side profile of his arm. I have to fix this. My sanity is telling me I have to fix this. Oh no. Whoa. And just clean that up a little bit. Trying to grab that. There we go. I was like, for some reason, it wasn't letting me. Okay, so that one's more. That arm is more where he's placing his weight onto. And it is more out of the background, so like. You're not going to see it as much. I need to just fix this bottom part of the hand here. He's basically leaning back on that arm, essentially. And honestly, now we just... What does the clay button do? I need to flatten this, though, so... The constant issue that I'm having is flattening the bottom of the wrist. It's not what I want, but that looks pretty cool. Ooh. 
want that to set to minus. Blob this hand up a little bit. Wow, I am like slowly making this worse. That just makes that smaller. I need to like figure out a way to make this thicker. Holy cow, guys. I am on a struggle bus right now. Phil. What does Phil do? Oh my god. It's like I'm deflating the balloon. We got a nudge tool. We got a clay thumb. What does clay thumb do? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh okay uh, and then we got fill smooth clay draws probably my answer draws not not doing what I Oh, I'm subtracting. Right. It's like regardless of what I do, it subtracts. What the hell is going on here? What did I break? I'm sure I broke something, and that's why it's giving me problems. But uh, this is really frustrating, actually. So I got the snake hook. Increasing, smoothing. Like the smooth doesn't even work anymore, and I don't know why. I'm trying to thicken it. It's just... The inflate brush should work. I did try the inflate brush. Um... The problem is, is that no matter what I do, is it deflates it. So this is... If I do this, you can see, the plus, it basically flips everything inverted. <gasps> I know what the problem is. Object mode, uh, control A. I'm gonna apply all transforms. Is it because I, I have a feeling I know what the issue is. Yep, <laughs> ha ha, we figured it out guys. The issue was that I didn't have the transforms applied when I mirrored the arm from the other side. I was like, why is literally everything broken right now? Well, that's the answer. That is the answer great now we just need to smooth this oopsies uh, we're gonna smooth that with the place aha math guys always apply your transforms frustrating sometimes who said life wasn't frustrating though whoa that is a little broken there keep smoothing it till it's not broken there we go Now we could take this part here and then flatten the bottom of it. It's 
pretty close. I uh, think we could probably... Pinch everything inwards just to... Uh, you said the topology. I hate when that happens, and I still don't know why it happens, but at least you found the solution. <laughs> yes. Uh, the solution is I'm an idiot. Um, but yeah, I mean, in all seriousness, the uh, if you are mirroring like an object from another side, make sure to apply your transforms. Otherwise, you sit here live on a live stream in front of people trying to figure out what the hell is going on. I think I also just screwed it up by using that pinch tool. So let me back up a little bit here and let's use the inflate tool, but we're just going to bring everything in a little bit. still want it to be thin we just don't want it to be deathly thin where just need this to be inflated slightly oops And I need this joint here to match. It's like he's got a very fatty arm, honestly. So we'll probably just smooth it out slightly. There we go. It's feeling a little bit better. Feeling a lot better. I'm gonna probably the back of his arm is just so thick right now. Let's uh let's go ahead and grab it and just bring it in a slightly. There we go. Just kind of smooth an overall shape of this arm out. Don't want any clipping. Nice. I think that works pretty nicely for the uh, general shape of the body. Oof. We'll see if we finish today, guys. I mean, it took me as long just to create the arms and the torso. We're moving through at lightning speed now. Go back into object mode here. Let's see. I'm going to, for this, I do want to have a bit of a socket for where the legs are going to go into. Again, the pinch might be the answer here. Kind of creating this overall shape where the legs would be. Okay. That's pretty nice. And then, of course, we'll use a little bit of a draw or the inflate here. I'm actually thinking the draw with the minus works pretty nicely for this. And we'll just create that area in which that socket will be.
and then we'll want to smooth this out as well. But essentially just building that area where the leg will go into, connect to. Yeah, that works pretty nice. And then we'll, we can smooth this out just ever so slightly. I'm going to smooth it in, though. Oh, whoa, whoa. We might want to retopologize it first. Just clean that edge up as well. And, and then go from there. So use the grab tool here and... Basically, just creating all the sockets to where everything's going to go. Doesn't have to be pretty. It's just got to have that line. I'm thinking this side right here just needs to be a little smoother. Then overall, we could just grab this down and... I mean, we're not going to see this part anyways, but it is nice to have our area so that way I don't have to worry about clipping on the back side. Okay. Pretty basic. Pretty basic. But we're getting there. We're getting there. Um... Let's see, how do we want to go about this? We could do the same thing we did before. I'm also thinking we could just do a cylinder. We'll scale that down. Yeah, it's not bad for the, the one of the wrist joints. Do the same thing over here, honestly. I'm going to have to fix the edge of the arm here to look more consistent I think on this side that's fine yeah that's totally fine this creepy's uh, this sorry this creepy's actually pretty character or this character's actually pretty creepy you decide it's not for me to decide, you guys decide. And I'm wondering... <laughs> Is this a bad idea? Just duplicating the arm and putting it here, honestly? leg is just very long but uh let's see let's let's put the cursor all the way uh right here probably and then we can rotate on the 3d cursor Just using the arms as the uh, <laughs> as the legs. I'll have to shrink this here back to where the joint location is. But honestly, this will at least get us pretty close uh, for the start of it. 
So let's see. Let's uh, grab this guy and go back into sculpt mode. Yeah, guys, sculpting is so easy once you have the uh, the initial elements already created. I think that's the one cool thing about ZBrush. Well, ZBrush has a lot of cool things, but the the one really nice feature of it is that they have so many presets like already built into everything. So you really don't have to do all that much sculpting. It's kind of, I mean, you do, but you get a lot of stuff for free. I'm going to use the inflate here to get the size of the leg down. He looks like my uncle. <laughs> hey, that's not very nice. Gotta be careful, Keysign. Your uncle might be a subscriber on my channel. I don't know. Um, irrelevant question to what <laughs> uh, you're doing, but the Blender modding community is pretty toxic and full of trolls who feed wrong info. How do I copy weights from a weights mesh that was an armature to another mesh that has its own armature? How do you copy weights from a weights mesh? So, like, copying weights from one object to another? Um, I'll be honest, I, I don't know. But I'm sure someone in this chat may be able to uh, help you. And if not someone in this chat, then I would recommend joining our Discord. Link is in the description. Um, and you can post your question on there. And there are a lot of great other artists that work uh, in Blender and other softwares that might be able to help you out. I unfortunately do not have the answer for you off the top of my head. We try not to be toxic in our community. I don't think being toxic really helps anybody. It's like, does it make you feel better about yourself to be toxic? I don't know. Sounds like you've got some issues you need to to work on not you but the person that is uh being toxic yeah thanks uh yeah uh, go ahead and place the uh yeah rest in peace greg <laughs> data transfer modifier would be my best guess yeah hasselhoff is great with blender ask him questions um and put that over in the discord and uh that way you guys can share screenshots and whatnot in case anybody else has the same question. Overall, just trying to get the general shape of this leg uh, correct here. I'm thinking we're going to want our cursor here to be on the inside. Goodness. Let's place the cursor there, and I'm still rotating on the 3D cursor. This will allow us to get the orientation of the leg to be a little bit better. I'm thinking overall, we're probably going to want to shrink it a little bit more, though. So if I just use the elastic deform, this will allow us to just grab his leg and overall just get it to be where we want it to be. <laughs> weight painting is just a sore subject 100 who I, I i hate weight painting it's like if i don't get it to work in like automatic weight like on my rigs i'm always not in a good mood <laughs> it's terrible but that's the thing right I feel like uh, 
sometimes also I've, I find people don't like to give answers to stuff because to them it might be obvious because they've known how to do it forever. But I don't think that's a, a reason to be rude to someone about it. It's like if you think it's pretty obvious and they're asking a dumb question, we're well, not saying that this is a dumb question, but if you think it's a dumb question, it's like, then just don't say anything. My mom always told me that if I don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. And that is the mantra that I live by. Oh, he's got a little, little problem with his, his buttocks down here. It's fine to just dump the question in general. Yeah, throw it in general. And yeah, it's exactly what I look for in a uh, resident user of the official Discord help section. Yeah, I think uh, overall I'm not disappointed about this leg. I think that works really nicely. Should we do the whole one leg before we duplicate everything to the other side? I think that's maybe maybe the answer. Let's see, we've got like these kind of joints there. Hmm. Let's go back to object mode here. I'm going to duplicate this leg. And we want to line him up. And we're going to have to do a little bit of sculpt work. But uh, this will, I think, work pretty nicely. I'm going to scale this down on individual origins and kind of line this up. And we'll make our own joint, of course. And we'll, uh, let's see. Thinking, so there needs to be like that kind of circular joint connection, which we can add in right now. Uh, probably just another cylinder. Yeah, and then we can, we can, uh, I guess, hard sculpt mode. Uh, this to be have a little bit more of what we want. But I'm going to fix this top of the leg here. Let's kind of smooth it out a little bit. The thing is, uh, we want to apply all our transforms again. Whoops. Why is... Let's smooth that out a little bit. I think because I scaled it weird, it might be a problem. I'm not sure. But uh, let's go ahead and subtract the top of this inwards and then we will of course
think that works nicely. And then the, this kind of like just hugs it a little bit on the front of it. Just kind of create the front part of the kneecap. Um, I might want to smooth this out as well. So we'll get to that here in a second. And then, of course, the calves. It's, uh, let's see. Overall, we'll probably want to smooth this out a little bit. Smooth the bottom part of here as well. Great. I like that. Now, question is, how does the top part connect to this socket? Is it, so it's rotating like that. Hmm. So it's like a, another connection joint that goes into it. That's a little bit smaller. I like that. Needs to be a little bit further up, like so. And we'll fix this with another sculpt mode here. And I want to flatten kind of the front section a little bit more. We could just use the elastic deform for this last bit. Just kind of move everything back. That way we don't have any clipping problems. I'm thinking that works pretty nicely. Hmm. I think I'd probably throw in a bevel node here. Change the amount of segmentations. And then of course the size of this to be a little bit smaller. A shade smooth that that doesn't look too bad I'm gonna select this face here and say cursor just selected and I I turned on bolts last week you guys can do this as well this is just a a blender uh, add-on that's free it's already inside of blender you just need to basically enable it and it gives you bolts also gives you nuts Just gonna align this. I know I could probably just copy the orientation of it, but I'm lazy and I don't want to. Okay. So now we've got ourselves a bolt on the side of his leg joint there. And we're probably gonna want that on the other side as well. So let's go ahead and add in a mirror node. We're just gonna mirror it around this cylinder. There we go, on the Z axis. That looks pretty good. Not a huge fan of how that goes into that. Let's go into sculpt mode on this guy here. And I want to draw. Yeah, let's draw it inwards on the edge here. So I'll just use the plus. I'll create a little bit of a lip uh, around it. And that'll look a little bit more natural. 
want it to feel like this is kind of stuck into it. We can use the crease tool as well. Okay, nice. And I'm going to subdivide it one more time. Let's go ahead and save our work. And we'll just do a little bit of smoothing. It's a pretty strong amount of smoothing, so I just want to lessen the strength here. There we go. Yeah, it feels more like it's jammed in there as if it's like a control joint essentially to it. Which is nice. I like that. There we go, guys. One of the legs is done, I think. I'm going to overall kind of just grab the hip portion of it. Just make sure that's lined a little bit better on the inside of that and then of course we're going to model around that once we go back to the torso here in a little bit we don't have to do any feet because we don't see the feet so let's go ahead and just save this go to object mode and I'm going to grab this whole leg here I'm going to duplicate him on the y axis and just kind of mirror everything as well. I think before we do that, let's go through and I'm going to apply the multi-res. I'm going to apply the... Oh, you know what? Never mind. I'm going to take this whole thing and let's create a empty. And instead of mirroring the individual objects, Although I'm wondering if medium point would work better. Yeah, medium worked better. I don't have to do the whole empty situation. I realized I was actually transforming stuff on a median point. And yeah, let's just line this up with his other leg socket. And overall, we're just gonna rotate this on the 3D cursor here. And yeah. Just want to rotate this bit now as well. Okay, we'll save that. Honestly, the other thing we might need to do, uh, let's apply all transforms to this guy who was just inverted. Um, we're going to want the bottom of these legs to go a little bit more off screen because right now they don't at all. The other thing we're going to see is kind of the overall orientation of him on the bed. I'm going to select everything that is our character, which is all of this actually. Uh, so let's, uh, let's hide our layout. I'm going to select our entire dude that we have so far and we're gonna move all of this over to our character because I've been placing it into the wrong collection here the nice thing about that though is now if I want to I can select uh, this entire collection so if we do select objects and I re-enable our layout I can place him in our scene A little bit better than what I had before. I'm going to want this to be rotated maybe a little bit more. I'm going to actually parent all this as well. So that way I can make my adjustments and not... <sighs> 
And also, let's just parent this. T We're just gonna pseudo rig this. I mean, it's not really a rig, it's mostly just parents, but this will allow us to move everything around a little bit more freely. So now if I move this around, I just need to do this last arm here. Everything should move around with him. Fantastic. And then of course, I just want to place my like 3D cursor there. It's like I could fix clipping issues. It's a lot better. I like that this leg we could still see. I want him to go off a little bit more. So uh, I'm gonna save my work as we're going here. We're gonna select this leg and let's go to sculpt mode. And we're just gonna make him go off screen. Honestly, nothing crazy. Mostly just trying to get the overall shape. I, I, he needs to feel natural sitting where he's sitting, you know? So, um. Gonna apply that. This arm back here does need to probably rotate more backwards as he's placing more of his pressure of Yeah, something like that. You can't even see that. Let's take this whole body then and just rotate him. Cheat a little bit more towards camera. Let's see, I kind of like to rotate this a little bit more so like that. His legs are so close to each other. I kind of want to fix that. Uh, let's let's move it further apart to where we do want it to be. And then I'm going to have to fix this. Um, let's see. Let's go to sculpt mode here. And we're just going to try to clean this up a little bit better. Let's smooth this whole section out and then use the grab tool to kind of move over the socket. And I think, let's see, that's the crease tool. Just crease up over here. Oh no, sorry, we want to pinch it. And then we can draw in this leg socket as well. So, We'll smooth this, but I just want to pop that back out. We're just cleaning up our, 
old leg socket that we had. Perfect. And then smooth this a little bit. And then pinch this back in over here. And then we'll draw overall everything kind of inwards on this. Great. And cool. I'll just go ahead and clean that up a little bit. It's got like this diaper. Wow. Is he dead? Who is who dead? I didn't even see that comment key sign until just now. Are you talking about this guy? <laughs> the puppet? Oh, so the art is cool and creepy. Is he dead? Um, I don't know, man. He's dead inside. Maybe that's what we're going with here. Maybe he is dead. We're working on a ghost character type thing. I need to smooth this out, that arm out a little bit better on that side. Sorry, Kisan, I didn't see your chat till just now. I was so infest, uh, in invested in my uh, my ugly sculpting work. I think that works pretty nicely. And then, of course, we can get onto the head. I feel like the, the fingers and hand can just be, um, you know, hand hand topology. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's not going to be that difficult to do. It's the head that needs to be more precise. Let's, um, let's add in another cube here. And we will use a multi-resolution we can subdivide a few times. I mean, overall, the size of it's not bad. We just need the shape to be better. Pretty simple head shape, too. I mean, we're, we're not doing anything crazy here. I say that now. I'm saying that before I get in and realize how difficult it is to do this. <laughs> oh, no. Use the pinch tool. We'll create the jawline here, I'm thinking. Overall, just kind of creating the, the shape of the head. I'm going to... Create this jaw a little bit like that, and then I bet you I can turn on Let's use symmetry. Is it the x-axis or the y-axis that we're going to want that?
think this symmetry thing is the thing is throwing me off here. Probably should have done that from the beginning. I just don't know what side is because I'm doing it at an angle. Probably would have been smart to not do this at an angle, and then I wouldn't have any issues. Yeah, to figure out how to sharpen this edge here of the the face model, I think. Um, let's see, rotate this on individual origins. And guys, guess what? We don't have to worry about ears today. The worst part of uh, sculpting at ears. Yeah, you're probably right. I So that's what I didn't do earlier. I was... Let's just do it this way. I couldn't after I had already done it started. Because I wasn't doing it symmetrically. Let's do it from here. And then... Uh, Let's go to tools and go to sculpt mode here and then enable symmetry on the y-axis because I had already started although you're right this is probably the way easier method of doing it I just didn't do it this way I'm gonna use the elastic grab right now and overall let's just try to get the shape of this head a little bit more defined All right, thank you so much, Hasselhoff, for jumping in. Try to sharpen this whole thing over here just getting the overall shape down here and then we can have this come to a point at the bottom sharpen that whole area down there and then I could have create the jawline here which goes up the side and uh, let's see Just have the nose come out at that point, I think, also.
very shark jaw. Okay. I don't hate it. Then overall, we just want this whole back here to kind of go up. We're not going to see this whole section. We'll smooth it out here in a second, but uh, the elastic deform I think there we go and overall just smooth that out on the bottom Trying to see if I could get that general overall shape. I don't want this to bend down too much. Create more of a sharp edge on the bottom. And then let's see pinch option a little bit more. Okay. And then uh, I suppose we could probably go into here and the nose is pretty small. Oops. I don't know if that's a little too high up because I think it's a little too high up. Let's smooth that out a little bit. And probably down here, right? Let's go to use the draw tool down here. just kind of like rough out the area in which this is going to be. I'm going to create the area where the eye sockets are going to be. So where I find it becomes quite difficult to make it not look like it's an alien is like this particular part of the journey. <laughs> Luckily, our character is very Tim Burton-esque, so we don't have to worry terribly too much about that because... Okay, and then our 
grab tool here, just... Tighten up the area where the eyes are. Doesn't need to be too round, just... Don't want him to be angry. It's mostly just... Yeah, right now he's very angry. The uncanny valley. Yeah. What happens when you're just working in grayscale and uh, you just get the sculpt down? It's one of those things. It takes time to smooth it out and get what you want. Overall, we want this nose section to be a little thinner, too, I think. Right? No, we don't. Mostly, we want this eye to be out here and then let's see we want this whole thing to smooth it's like it's a surface and the nose is only like that small section what's the hotkey for unparenting um I believe it's alt p and then you could do clear appearance, keep transforms. And then that way, if you did move it with the parent, it doesn't snap back to the original area where it was at. Unless you do want it to snap back to the original area and where it was at. In which case, uh, just Alt-P and then clear parents. Okay, overall, not hating it. Not liking it, but I don't have to hate it. Get the shape of the, the base of the head down. Uh, does the orientation matter for UVs? Um, kind of depends. Uh, it depends on how you're unwrapping your object. But no, not not necessarily. Only matters with when you're unwrapping your object and how you're doing it then. Okay, that's not bad. Um, I suppose we'll want to do the lips as well, so let's let's get to that. Probably 
probably not as large. Actually, I like that that I did a tiny bit there. One thing I know, uh, uh, less detail. Uh, just position to fit the best size you want as much of the UV canvas as possible. Less details of the you can in the smaller UV. Yep, 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 yep. Gonna grab this now and overall, it's the I mean, it's mostly gonna be shading that we're gonna be doing here, but let's see, let's smooth this out. I'm not liking any of this. Let's uh, make this pretty. Yeah, it's like the bottom edge of the lip here, the top edge of the lip here. And then the overall shape of the, the nostrils there, which we can smooth out slightly. And I'm going to take the pinch tool now and pinch the top part of the lip. And of course, we could pinch the bottom part of the lip as well. And I'm thinking if we just grab it ever so slightly and out this a little bit more up here and a little bit on the bottom as well <laughs> that's what I'm doing dude I got a mouse right here <laughs> and I am sculpting with a mouse <laughs> welcome to my world Not sure I'm a huge fan of this upper part of the lip here. Just get a little bit less of that. I'm thinking shape's getting better, better, better. We're almost there. I almost got the weight correct to just manually remove the weight in the, uh, the cleavage and increase the jacket. Okay. Oh, I didn't I haven't looked over at Discord to see what you're working on. Let's add some creases in here. And then overall grab this part of the nose out a little bit.
mods that are against the TOS terms of service terms of service mods that are against the terms of service oh I see you're posting a bunch of cleavage photos I wouldn't say it's not exactly not safe for work Oh, that little bit right there helped big time, I think. Kind of want to grab the eyes and make them a little smaller. Okay. What do you guys think? Yeah, I haven't have I don't have the eyes in there yet, so it's a little hard to tell. Sharpen up this jawline a little bit more. this back in object mode here and then if I scale that and then place that on the model that we already have Let's see how this looks Definitely getting into the alien world right now. Okay. do this we're gonna add in a UV sphere scale that down place that a little bit more on the inside here and then I'm gonna use a mirror saying we won't ever Probably scale this up slightly. Definitely hit that uh, uncanny valley section, guys. It's not supposed to look like a person anyways, but I feel like it just looks too much like an alien. Just 
just trying to find... Red is heavily affected by weight in the uh, the paint, right? Yes, red and blue is not affected. Yeah, that's correct. So it's more like um, the more the, the the more red it is, the more affected it is. So it's like green would be slightly affected, yellow would be, uh, or uh, you would have like light blue would be slight slightly affected. So it's like a cyan color, green, a little bit more so, yellow than red, that type of thing. I think that works really well. Uh, Disney characters do have V-necks. Yes. <laughs> no, there's nothing that's not safe for work about it. I just pulled it up. It's fine. getting closer guys like I don't think this is once we shade this I think it's gonna look a lot nicer I just like to get the overall shape just a little bit better Yeah, I think that looks a lot better there. alien dude chilling in a chilling in his bedroom I'm gonna go back into this guy over here we'll go to sculpt mode now and I'm thinking Just do that. Well, let me use the grab tool here and oops. Kind of fix the top part of his. Um, 
Yeah, and then the hands themselves, that's all going to be pretty straightforward. I'm getting hungry, and it's only because I freaking didn't eat lunch. Because I was lazy. I was like, oh, I don't want to go out and get lunch before I start my live stream today. And so now, here I am. Hungry. About two and a half, three hours. Wow, we are three hours into our live stream. It's okay, though. It's alright. It's alright. save that and now the hand <laughs> we also don't have legs but uh, am I angry I'm not angry I'm hungry <laughs> But that's my secret cap. I'm always hungry. There we go. Captain America reference. <laughs> am I hungry because... Am I uh, angry because I'm hungry? We're getting to that point. We're not there yet. Probably a bit hangry. <laughs> you don't want to see me when I'm hangry. No, I don't want to see you when you're hangry. I want to see myself when I'm hangry. I love how, by the way, when we were talking about NSFW stuff, um, it's like, what? Um, I love how Disney was brought up as like the example of whether or not something in this NSFW. It's like, well, Disney doesn't, or Disney allows it. It's like, oh, I love how that's the standard for what NSFW stuff is. I'm thinking we're just gonna Dis Disney made cuties, so I mean they have no st <laughs> Wait, they made cuties? Cuties was that like dance film came out a few years back, wasn't it? I thought that was like a Netflix film. I remember there was a lot of outrage for it, but I'll be honest, I don't even remember if it came out or not. The kids pageant thing? Yeah, I'll be honest, I don't remember whatsoever what it's about. 
I just remember a lot of people talking about it. And then I don't remember if it came out or not. Like, I thought maybe it got canceled. Just goes to show you how much out of the loop I am. It was controversial, but many French films are. Oh, was that a French film? Oh, it was a French film. Uh, was a kid's pageant? What does that mean, though? Kid's pageant. Like a... I guess I don't really want to know, if I'm being completely honest. There's a lot of weird controversial films that have come out, though. Like... If you think about it, I think there was the, uh, I mean, all the films that back in like 80s, 90s, um, what's her name? Brooke Shields. She was into some, she was in some weird films that I heard about. And it's like, how does that stuff get made? And also, why are the people that are making those films not like in jail? Doesn't make sense, man. Just Google it. I'd rather not Google it. I'm not going to go into it. I'm not going to. Well, okay. Yeah. Let's not talk about it. But I also don't want to Google it. Kids pageant. Basically, they dress up their kids to look attractive to win prizes. It's an American thing. Hey, now. Uh, attractive being questionable. <laughs> well, yeah. That sounds creepy. <laughs> Yeah, I just remember hearing about it. I, I didn't know if it actually got released or not. I know a lot of people were, like, really pissed off about it. There's always a lot of selective outrage, right? Wait, no, this has got to be... Zoom it in? Why are we so... There we go. That hand looks so weird, dude. So we try to do three fingers. It just looks strange. Oh, it's this finger right here that's too big. Wait, like eight-year-old beauty pageant. Oh, what the heck? So wait, they made a whole film about that? Why? That's creepy as shit, dude. Sorority, uh, sorority Boys 2002 over Cuties 2020. Soror Please tell me Sorority Boys is at least about college students. Honestly, I don't think this hand's working for me.
Chris Rock Selective Outrage. <laughs> is that a, is that a comedy special he did? Get my hand here. We'll do a pinky as well, I suppose. I think we have to do a pinky. loop that and I think fill that in and fill the bottom in just do each side individually do the top piece as well Got some flat fingers. Surprising how much Barry Watson uh, passes in the movie. Oh, I, oh, you guys are talking a lot about. Oh wow, I missed a lot. Uh, <laughs> to read into that later. Here I am making a hand, guys. Which I feel like is one of the harder things for me to model and y'all are going on about cuties that's better probably more like that I gotta fix this pinky finger here, and I think we're good to go. I like that. Getting lost as blender is the real art form. Like five hours pass a day, adjusting this jacket and adding a body to the armor model. 100%. I mean, I've been working on this for the last three hours, so. Bend that down and I, I think we grab the end of the hand here and then we can just rotate it up using the proportional editing. Yeah, we'll save that. That's pretty cool. What do you guys think of the 3D model so far? We'll have to see what it looks like once we start to shade everything.
Yeah, a bit like Howard the Alien. <laughs> well, we're, we're not going for the alien look, but it's a freaking annoying thing to fight against, especially with like a weirdly shaped head like this. I think once we get into the shading aspect of things, it's going to work a little bit better. Maybe. Hopefully. Definitely feels more alien the farther the head is away from adding in the weird strands of hair will help for sure. Yeah, I think so. So it's this weird thing where the eyes, they always, whenever they feel soulless, it feels like an alien. And I think that's also part of it. But, yeah. Alas, I think we are done with sculpting. Potentially. We have like a pillow back here to add, I think. And overall, I mean, this whole thing here also needs to feel a little bit more like cloth. Slightly wrinkly. Have I ever used Linux? Uh, yes. Yes, I have. Which, uh, which Linux, though, specifically, I should be asking. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Crashy crash time. Ah. Oh, shit. Not the subdivide button. The um to subdivide button was the one I was trying to press, and I accidentally just pressed the subdivide button. Please, please don't crash on me. Please, Blender Gods, please don't crash on me. It didn't. Okay. I'm just going to delete that. Multi-resolution. Subdivide, subdivide. Yeah, it should be good. Potentially. Yeah, there we go. And using this cloth uh, sculpt tool, what we could do is we could add in some wrinkles. Where we want to have some wrinkles at... Uh, yes, I've used Ubuntu. Mostly at work. I don't use it at home. I have Windows. Uh, but I've coded, like, batch scripts and stuff for Ubuntu specifically. The trick here is that we're using this cloth tool to essentially bunch it up in areas to make it feel like he sat down on this bed and caused it to ripple a little bit.
I think that looks pretty sweet. And we'll keep it at two just so we can kind of see what we're doing inside of this viewport here. And then um, a trick that I would like to do is let's grab this guy and I just apply everything there but uh, I'm going to specifically grab all the way around the top of this and uh, let's also grab specifically this line here I think maybe, oops, this one here should do the trick. Let's say P selection. And let's grab this new little selection tool that we have here and then say object convert to, where's that at? Let's turn that into a curve that we can get some geometry out of. And that'll help give us that nice little edge that we would have on like a pillow. Yeah, subdivide surface this though. That's pretty nice. So that, that'll they'll add to the outside of the pillow there for what we're going for. I'm gonna have this blanket because it is a blanket. Um, we just have it go up to the edge a little bit better for this pillow here. Just here in sculpt mode, this is pretty easy to do. You can even have it be a little bit thicker even. Okay, great. And then of course, we're gonna add in all of our materials to all of that stuff as well. But, um, That works pretty nicely. Let's uh, grab this whole bottom of this uh, blanket that we have here. Uh, first thing we're gonna do actually is duplicate it, uh, but I'm gonna hide that. And then this guy here, we're just gonna grab this whole bottom edge of the blanket. And that's great. Let's use a solidify option after this whole thing. This will make the blanket a little bit thicker. And now if we Alt H, we will have our blanket on top of our bed. And that way we'll have a mattress as well as a blanket to work with here. I'm gonna make this a little bit thicker even. scale this whole thing down slightly because we don't want this clipping to happen Can I 
I go to sculpt mode with two things at the same time? I don't know if I can. Okay, that's a lot better. Let's go ahead and save that. Uh, so now we have the, the blanket on top of our bed. Just a little extra detail that we now don't have to worry about. Um, I might even, after the solidify, we can go in and subdivide surface. Might even do that before everything else. That way we're smoothing out this edge here. No, I guess it does look better after everything. And honestly, let's get rid of this right there. Delete those vertices. And voila. Now the blanket is not going all the way over the edge. It's only going to the edge of the mattress. And now we've got a pillow back here that we haven't modeled yet. I know like with like Marvelous Designer and things like that, you can get really nice pillows so quickly one day one day I will get marvelous designer or something and my life will be complete overall uh, the shape of it something like this <laughs> pillows yes just pillows nothing more than pillows your whole computer is just lagging as you're doing uh, your weight painting that adds up Uh, and then with this, let's go ahead and uh, go into sculpt mode. This will make it a little bit easier to kind of get everything where exactly how I want it. We're just going to feel like it's laying on the bed, but then up against the wall a little bit. The trick is to make it feel like there's gravity of some kind. very much back there but uh what it does get us is the ability to let's see i just want one corner kind of like up against the wall here like so yeah i think that works pretty nicely you're not going to really see it all that well let's go over here scale this up rotate it
Yeah, I could live with that. And then here, let's subdivide it again and go into sculpt mode. Should have the ability with the cloth functionality again to create some more wrinkles on our pillow. nice and then of course let's go into object mode here and we can apply our multi-resolution thing that we have going on here actually maybe not let's don't apply it and um, wait yeah let's apply it. it's fine and then ideally what we want is to select Kind of like the pinnacle vertices that we have here. Like so. And that's all we really need. And then if we say P, selection. We can grab these vertices and then of course convert those to a curve. And add in some depth to them. Point zero one. Yeah, that's fine. And so now we've got ourselves like this nice kind of like pillow like material that you would have back here. Really easy way of creating kind of like those edges that you would see on pillows. And yeah, uh, let's go ahead and save that. Um, our main torso here. Let's go into sculpt mode. Let's subdivide him again. Use the draw tool and then draw on some kind of lines similar to what we have over in our reference photo. I'm going to increase the strength on this pretty high. And then the only other thing I might want to do is subdivide it at least one more time. Now I'm going to create these carve lines that we were having. I think I'm orienting this wrong. The new DP3 trailer will drop tomorrow. What's DP3? DP3. And then uh, by being vague, if you had to say belly rolls and didn't want them to clip through each other, would you leave the outline of said belly rolls blue? I'll be honest, sorry. I don't know the answer to that.
Oh, Deadpool. Really? I thought they already dropped the Deadpool trailer. Or was that just the teaser that they had released that one time? I'm just kind of like adding in some some overall lines. It's supposed to feel more wooden, so just giving kind of like some texture feeling to a lot of this. As much as I can with a regular mouse. <laughs> Let's see, object mode. I'm gonna select this arm now and go into sculpt mode again. And we'll just continue our work over here. Okay, and then of course, there's gonna be a lot of shading we're gonna do on the face. I don't know that we need to do too much like actual sculpting work. Uh, I'm gonna do this arm a little bit as well. Then we have the legs. Turn that all the way down. Yeah, I saw the teaser back when it was dropped. Uh, is you boss into 3D? Is my boss into 3D? Uh, yeah, like the company I work for? Your boss. Is my boss into 3D? Uh, I mean, he's a colorist, so not... I guess he's not into 3D, but he is. he likes the stuff that I do. Okay, let's swap over to the lake here. Actually, I'm, we'll probably get away with the lake not doing any sculpt work because I think we're going to do a lot of shading displacements. So, um, not too concerned about that right now. Uh, let's go ahead and add in an empty. I'll move this over to the camera section over here we'll just call this focus if I select my camera now I'm gonna set depth of field to the focus and
Let's turn on depth of field over here. We could do that by going over to their shading settings here and then just turning on depth of field. And of course, we're just gonna use this to see how much depth of field we really want in our shot. Yeah, my boss works as a colorist. Uh, his, um, so the company I work for is a finishing facility and um, great color grading makes your film look spectacular even if you shot, you know, not so good um, material. Um, it, he's kind of the best. And so what we do is the kind of section of filmmaking where it's like, they already edited the film, the film is now edited. Well, that goes to a DI facility. And uh, there is where the color grading will happen. And kind of like post-production begins. My department that I work in is the visual effects arm of it. So we'll do all the visual effects. Um, and that that happens kind of at the same time as color grading, although color grading happens a little bit after that. And yeah, so that that's kind of the area in which I work. And so my boss, uh, the owner of the company, he is a colorist. I'm gonna change the f-stop here to a bit more. I want this arm to be out of focus, which it is, so that's good. And then the hair, you can add in some hair. Imagine a black and white color space in Blender. Uh, well, you can kind of do that. Kind of. Um, I believe post-processing you can do it, or when you select. There is a way to do it. I forget how to do it, but I mean, it doesn't really matter because we're going to be compositing it anyways. go into the head here. I'm just going to apply our modifier of all of our vertices. And we're just going to select the top of the head there. And let's go into our data section here. I'm going to create a whole new vertex group. Assign hair. So now if we go ahead and add in our hair particles, instead of them going everywhere like so, I'm going to select our I'm going to want like five hairs. <laughs> And for children, I'm going to turn on interpolated, and I think 10 is fine. And let's see, hair dynamics will turn on. That just makes your hair fall. So that way we don't actually have to sculpt it. We can just have it fall. also change the kink of it so let's do that make it curly probably change the amplitude here and I think also the hair stiffness under the dynamics Change that to like a point 0.1. Maybe not. Point 0.3. Any tips for color grading? The secret sauce. Um, I would say it's very difficult to color grade if you're just doing it on your own monitor because uh, colorists have like whole displays that are specifically made just for color grading. So if you're trying to do it on your home computer, it makes it a little difficult for you to do so. Um, that being said, if you do get your hands on like a nice monitor, which you can get for, uh, the problem is they're expensive. Monitoring is very expensive. 
But uh, if you do want to get into it, DaVinci Resolve is probably the best place to go to to do color grading. Um, they have a fantastic, uh, you know, they have a they have a fantastic uh, software, pretty industry standard. So that makes it nice because you know you're using something that literally everybody else is using as well. And you're not alone. I think with the curl here, let's do 0 0.02. Yeah, I mean, the way I color grade this stuff on this stream is not, certainly not, um, I wouldn't recommend how I do it. I just use my monitors here, um, but you want to have like a proper monitor that is calibrated. So that way you know what you're looking at is correct and that's the best way to color grade um do you see the new box camera from black magic i did not actually no i use the pocket 6k all the time although i don't look too much into like new cameras because i'm not gonna buy one so i'll be honest i don't keep up with it like i know red bought or not red nikon bought red that's like the huge news the last well maybe that's ancient news now but that was the last big news that I really heard about. We did see some of the new cameras. I'll be honest, I wasn't paying too closely attention to which ones were which. It probably did, Ben, but I don't think we were looking too hard. I'm going to set the world color to just be like complete black and that's going to give us like our own box to work with then adding in a sun is my job hard um i don't know what like my day job when what do you mean by hard i'm a generalist so i kind of just do everything from paint out shots to CG shots to whatever. So it can be challenging because uh, you have to know how to do a lot of different things. That's not to say my job is hard per se, but I think some people would ha uh, struggle with it because the thing is, is a lot of people get good at just like one thing. Whereas I unfortunately have to be good at a lot of things. And that makes my job fun for me because I enjoy that aspect of it, but it may be difficult for other people to do. Uh, 
have that fall off a little bit more so that way we're having kind of like more harsh light right here um let's see let's go turn this is the thing that we're going to be focusing mostly on for the lighting Now, the idea here is I'm just going to try to get the general lighting to kind of like fit our our shot. And then we can get into some shading and making this look good. Already, that's feeling pretty dynamic, which I, I do like that. Just make that a little bit less. I'm just trying to create a bit of a rim light here. It's going to catch his shoulder in a nice, realistic way, because otherwise it falls off. It's hard to see that. So what I'm doing is I'm lighting kind of his back shoulder there. Just to catch the light from behind him. What and where do you study to be a generalist? By the way, it's looking great so far. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, I don't know that... I didn't go to school for visual effects or uh, CG. So I, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you where to go to do those things. How I got into the uh, field was I started working... Um, well, I've, I've been doing visual effects for a very long time. Since, well, since I was like seven. So uh, I've just been making short films with friends and i think that's the best way to learn is to go and create films yourself with your friends go out with your nowadays you have cell phones i had a camcorder back when i was growing up and we would go out and film little short sketches and that really lent itself to me learning how the whole process worked as a whole and just experimenting with different things as a generalist my I, it was always I had to do everything so it's not like I only had to do like specific stuff and when I went into doing visual effects I got hired at a small studio and I was doing just paint out work and kind of like that aspect of things like cell phone screen replacements and whatnot and then it slowly moved more and more into me needing to know how to do so many different things and that is how I became a generalist I would say like it's going to happen more naturally. I don't know that you learn... As long as you're learning how to do different things, which you can do all that stuff on YouTube these days. Like, there are so many YouTubers that are showcasing how to do different aspects of production and visual effects. Just, like, learn it all. Learn it all. And f maybe you don't want to be a generalist. Maybe you want to learn how to do a very specific thing. I would kind of recommend that. And that's at least my recommendation is kind of test out the waters see all the different aspects of visual effects and then see really what you like to do the best there are schools to learn how to do visual effects i don't know that you need to go to school to learn how to do visual effects but it could help you if uh if you're not the kind of person that really wants to dive in and do your own projects then um there's a lot of great programs out there already I will say, I don't know anybody that went to school to do visual effects that works in the industry with me, so there is that. Not to say there there aren't people. I just, all the people I know that I work with are all kind of self-taught. How's that lighting look? I think we're on to something here. I realize there's probably supposed to be uh that's fine we can make adjustments let's duplicate this guy
just layering this basically. I think that works nicely too. Uh, self-taught, that's me. Oh, yeah, I am self-taught. Uh, but again, it's just, you know, I think it's just like... Growing up, I loved watching all the behind the scenes from like DVDs and Blu-rays. They don't do that stuff anymore. It's kind of sad. Not as much anyways. I mean, they sure, they still do it, but it's, it used to be so insightful. Like I watched all the Star Wars behind the scenes like a billion times. It's funny too, because I feel like every time I would watch it, there would be something new. Like as if they added stuff. <laughs> It's like you would find more and more in their DVDs that they had. Sure. Yeah, that kind of works. And then I'll add some shading and whatnot to the back wall. Help that sit a little bit better. like that um down here it's a little distracting i mean we could fix that in comp so i'm not too concerned about it let's get into some shading first before we really start tweaking of the lights i have a pretty simple light setup here i'm basically just having a, a stronger key light from this side here and then i'm just doing a bit of a rim light around the edge of his uh his shirt there of course i can rotate this more and more and we'll get more of an edge light that's on him I'm not too concerned about that right now but you can see really what it's doing if i swap this light to red you'll see kind of the light that's being added into the shot um primarily for this guy so i'm not sure let's see that's the bed kind of fine with this being rotated upwards also so that way we're getting less and less on the bed there kind of an easy way is just rotating that down creates a bit of a sharper edge though but So one thing I haven't really messed around with is uh, light linking inside of the new blender. I gotta figure that out. Let's see. Do blender light linking 4.0. Select the light or emissive mesh object and go into the shading panel. Create a new light or shadowing linking collection. Drag and drop the objects or collection from the outliner. Okay. So use nodes for this guy. And it's using this emission here. And then it says, select the light in emissive Create a new light or shadowing linking collection. Uh, what? Create a new light or shadowing linking collection. Select the light, emissive mesh object, and go to the shading panel. I'm under the shading panel. And then create a new light or shadowing linking collection. Drag and drop objects or collection from outliner. What? minute long video please tell me my secret oh I see and then under the object settings 
Okay, so no, we are not using nodes. But here we go under shading. So yeah, now we could take this guy and we could rotate him. This is great. So now you can see the red light is only on him and it's not on the bed anymore. That's fantastic. It's nice making a black and white scene because you know exactly where all your lights are. So yes, yeah, so now we have that light in there. And if I delete it, you can see what it's doing. We're adding kind of like this edge light, essentially to our character so that way he doesn't fall off too harshly into darkness i'm going to do the same with this light so here's what we're also going to do let's take this light i'm going to duplicate him and we're just going to take this guy we're going to hide him first and i'm only going to focus on this light Essentially, I want to create all the lights from my character. So let's see. I like having a bit of depth to our character here. So some light on that side, essentially. Let's do that. And shading. Light linking, character. So now it's only our character that's being lit by these two lights. And so now we'll have this additional light here. And that's gonna be lighting our entire scene. Um, whereas this light right here, probably lessen the intensity on him. But you can kind of see, well, I guess that doesn't matter. Yeah, okay. So I ended up deleting that light over here and just keeping this light here. And so now this one's only going to be shining on him, whereas this one's going to be lighting up the whole scene. Otherwise, it felt weird because you had like multiple shadows that should have been cast on the bed, but weren't being cast on the bed. So I think we'll be fine with it this way. I love the the shadowing that's happening here and you can kind of see this is lighting up the entire scene here whereas the white light is only lighting up specifically our character um, and of course we're dealing with a black and white image so we don't need any lights to have any specific colors but yeah, let's join that okay let's get into some texturing here that way we are moving forward here. So we'll go ahead and save this. Okay. Uh, what do you guys think for the lighting? Ugh. I think we should add in some eyeballs. Go to our shader editor here and... Let's add in Let's use a sphere projection. And let's go ahead and add in
I'm gonna add in an image texture, and then if we go to texture painting, should be pretty straightforward. We're gonna say image new, and we're gonna make this image completely white. New image. If we go back to layout, we should be able to just plug this directly in and we'll select our untitled photo that we had there. Might even just plug that directly into our principal BSDF and then have that plug in so that way we're not having it emit any light. Um, but if we go over to our texture paint now, we should be able to paint this black. Just right bop in the center. <laughs> that looks terrible. But um, I think I want the fall off to be pretty much zero. So I might take this into like Photoshop or something like that. Easy thing to do is just to add your little dot into here. I'm probably going to scale it up a little bit. I'm going to... that's good but I don't want actually I think I'm fine with that <laughs> that works pretty dang well okay and now I'm going to go ahead and save, but also uh, let's go down here to our, we're going to add a new brush in. So that's our black brush that we have, but we're going to use a texture mask and I'm just going to find a texture that we can import. So I'll hit new. Let's go to our texture over here. New. We're going to open up uh, from surface imperfections pack some uh, materials. I'm just going to grab this scratch material that we have here. And if I use that under our paint tool settings, I'm gonna use that new texture three that I just imported. And um, I think that should be good. Now let's change our color picker here to be something that's like a gray kind of color. And essentially we wanna paint on, on the outside here. So let's go ahead and turn on rake so that way we're not painting over ourselves a bunch of times. Essentially, we're going to be adding in kind of like this dirty outside feel to the eyes. And currently, that's pretty dang gray, but we can lighten it up quite a bit. And I also want random to be enabled. should be able to see that a little bit there. Why is that so dark? Hmm. A little too dark. Well, that's not working, obviously. Uh, let's see what I'm doing wrong here. So our texture mask is set to that. Oh, and our texture, we need to turn off texture. We don't want it to have that texture. Perfect. So now, back over here to our color options. You can see that the red is coming on properly. I want to have a slight gray Oops, no color. Turn off the saturation, please. And yeah, now we're just gonna paint on kind of like this material on the outside. It'll make it feel a little bit more handmade. Handmade, more realistic. And then, of course, swap this to white. I'll probably do the same thing for the outside edges here, just to give it more of a 
natural fall off. Anything you can do to make it not feel so artificial is usually the key to these things. So we want this to feel a little more hand painted. Probably up here, something like that. And that just gives it a nice scratchy kind of like feel to the whole thing. I want it to feel a more wooden, less artificial, or uh, more artificial, less organic. Okay. I could buy that. Let's do the same thing with kind of the rest of the body here. Got to paint in a bit of a darker uh, surrounding to the body. Let's do image, save. I should be... Let's add a new materials folder here. Shouldn't have called it untitled. That's my bad. But if we select this body now, I can go ahead and... Add in an image texture that we can load in. Go back to our texture paint real quick. We need to say image new, and then we'll call this face. And then create new image. And we will go to our layout here, and we'll select face. And essentially, we just want to paint on the areas here that we'll want. So let's go back over to our texture paint. And again, we're going to start with some light scratches kind of everywhere. We might even actually start with the eye sockets. Um, I'm actually thinking let's go to this whole thing and we're just going to say uh, smart UV project. And then the only other thing is let's go to our image over here. Might want to edit, resize the image. Yeah. And then we'll call this 4096 by 4096. And that way we just have more pixels to work with on a individual basis. So that way we're not running into an issue of it looking too low res. And yeah, I mean, now it's just going to come down to painting the different areas of this to feel more like hand painted, more natural. But really finding your groove. This is where it feels more like a... Uh, this feels more like a Tim Burton style character. kind of thickening this up a little bit. Yeah, more natural around the top, I think. Smooth out some of this. Overall, I mean, I think, let's see, that's good. Do some of the lips here as well. 
I love using brushes for this type of thing because um, like specific types, like this texture brush is really nice because it allows me to have a lot more control over fine details here. I'm going to save this as face up here and then This is nice. I mean, this is where you just got to get in the groove and uh, and work on this. This is normally the part of the show where I decide to start talking about something controversial like Disney and Star Wars. And, <laughs> and later people yell at me inside of my YouTube shorts about it. Um, and then I'm using this texture mask here, uh, and of course I can import more texture masks as I'm working on this stuff. So I have this other texture mask already inside of here, and then let's try to do some like light gray work or something like that, that maybe I'll want. Um, maybe even just dropping in a few paint strokes rather than holding down too much. accidentally froze it. Which actually, yeah, I like that. Taking a little bit of processing time here. I mean, what's the secret to sculpting stuff first and then having it so that you can animate it later? Mm. I gave him a beard. Not so much. Uh, let's see. And I'll do like fingerprints on top of this, I'm thinking. 
Uh, so it's just like we're going to be layering on some different elements. This is really uh, slow. Is it because I'm doing symmetrical? That's probably what the issue is here. Well, I need to find the top of the head. Is that up here? Probably. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And let's see, let's look at our reference image again. Nice, I like it. Let's go back to our layout settings over here. Well, actually, we'll need to go to our texture paint. Forgot to do something. You have to hit image, save. And so now if we go over to our layout, it should update. Yep, there we go. So now we've got like the primary like kind of like dirtiness of it. Um, although I'm going to want to add in another image texture. Let's just load something in here. Uh, go to our 1K options. Probably use this fingerprints option here. We could see really what it's doing to it if I just load that directly into our viewer here. Um, I'm gonna want to add in our texture coordinate and our mapping options and then add in a value. These are seamless textures so if we scale this up we'll see that it scales up and it works pretty nicely. Um, probably find like a good scaling like something like this. And then now if we go back to our principled BSDF, we're going to want to uh, take these and then plug them into our displacement. So we'll probably first do a math, multiply this, oops, not divide. Take this color value, multiply it by like a five or something, and then have that plug into our displacement. And then that's going to give kind of like an overall texture to everything here. And whatever we multiply it by is how much it's going to be doing that. So probably want something a little bit more subtle. So let's do like a 0.1. Yeah, it works pretty nicely. Uh, the other thing we could do uh, to solve this is we can add in a color ramp. And our color ramp Firstly, the, the more contrast we add into it, the more we can see what's going on here. So like if I add more black, we're removing some more. If I add more white, we're making it brighter and more contrasty, uh, which we might want to do. And then I'll just overall make that a little bit grayer. And then now if we go to our principal BSDF and view that, we'll kind of see overall we're kind of getting the shading rather than... I'm, I'm going to try not to break this too much though, so let's let's scroll that down. And then this black here, I might just make that a little bit more gray as well. And now we're going to kind of get some of those dents that you would get on like wood. Um, I want this to be a brighter color though. Something like that looks pretty good. I like that. And of course we can change the scaling up a little bit more if we want the overall amount of it to be a little bit larger. So let's, uh, let's see what we've got here. Honestly, 3.5 looks pretty sweet. And that adds in just like a little bit of extra, like kind of like texture to our overall image here. Um, and then let's see, with that being said though, we have our face texture that's being plugged into this, but we might want to do some more with the shaders rather than us painting on there, um, just to get some more free kind of 
overall, oops, not in the mission. I need a Musgrave. A noise, what? No way, guys. Did they take out Musgrave on Blender 4.1? They took out literally my favorite noise texture. Wow. Why? Why? Why would they do that? They took out Musgrave, guys. They took out Musgrave. Why would they do that? That, why? <laughs> I'm so shocked right now. Why would they do that? I don't understand. I don't know why they would do that. <laughs> I'm so sad right now. They took out my favorite texture of all time. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, t okay, fine. We will uh, move on with our life, but uh, I am deeply saddened. I'm gonna take this overall dust here, and uh, if we add in another texture mapping, just add in a value node on top of this. Scale everything up. Let's use a color ramp after this to get these to be pretty decently close to each other. And so I'm using this noise texture here, and I want this to be fed into the B input of that. So what that's going to do is it's going to give us overall kind of like a bit more of a dirty feel to it. Um, which, yeah, we'll increase the roughness on this. Increase the detail on this. And then that gets fit into the principled BSDF, which overall kind of just like feeds this whole thing. I'm gonna lift this a little bit higher. The metallic is zero. Why is as gray as it is? Am I needing a harsher overhead light? Which we could do. Set that to I think it looks much better. Uh, yeah, so let's uh, let's go back to our model here. And I think one other thing I'd like to do is we have these kind of like bark lines that we created here. Um, I'd like those to be painted on a bit darker inside of our overall texture. So we already plugging those into the displacement there, but we can actually also feed that into our main principled BSDF. So let's uh, let's do that. I'm gonna use another principled BSDF though. And um, we're gonna use a mix shader inside of here. So this is our current texture that we're running with right now. 
but we can run this directly into the top of that shader input and then this into the bottom of that shader input. I'm just going to make this black and using the output of this color ramp here or this texture here, we can create a new color ramp. So we're going to use this mat here and plug this mat directly into this color ramp and then plug this color ramp into the top of that shader editor. So now anywhere there's white, it's going to put this texture and anywhere there's black, it's going to put this texture. And so now we can go view our mix shader here. We should have more uh, like the darker areas of our image here that'll we can affect uh, using this guy. So now if I just make that a little bit lighter, we don't want it quite as obvious. We can totally do that. Uh, the only thing I don't like as much is it being on the face here. It's more distracting if it's on the nose and front of the face. So we could do that a couple different ways. Um, the way I'm going to choose to do it is if we go to our texture paint, we could say image, new, and I'm going to say uh, main face. And this can honestly just be a full black image that we're going to create here. And uh, we're going to paint just complete white on the area that we want. So let's go add a new image texture into this so we can see what we're doing here. If we say main face, we're just going to select main face here and then plug that in. Everything turns black. So now if we go to the texture paint, we can actually paint the areas in which we're not going to want that material to be. Uh, in which case, actually, I'm also going to remove this uh, this texture that we have here. So now I should paint with just just the regular brush. And I think that's it. Like all we have to do is just select that area. Probably do. Ah, no, I think that's fine. Just this main area. Just a little bit to the side, maybe as well. I don't want any texturing happening at this section of the face here. So I'm just going to create a mat. Now, if I take this, I'll just hit save, save new image. Now, if we go back over to our layout, you'll see all of that there. We're going to probably create a, eh, we don't need a color ramp. It's totally fine as is, but, uh, if we go look at our main texture right now, everything is still being covered. So we have to take this image texture and move it all the way back here. And after this mix node here, before it, uh, sorry, not that one, down here where our multiply is and we're using all of our displacement stuff, we're going to take this all the way down there. Um, and we're going to do two things. First, we're going to say mix color. And we'll just do it to the multiply first, but we can also plug this directly. Wait a second. We're actually going to do it before this whole section here. That way we don't have to do it twice. So we're going to move this main face all the way to that area there. I'm going to say mix color. And then this, of course, can come out from here into both of these color ramps that we're doing. And... I'm going to say everywhere that this main face is, I want it to be completely black. So again, just plug this directly up into our factor. And what we're going to get now is that it's just completely black in the center of the face. Whereas before, it had it kind of, uh, if, if we remove that mat, we'll see that the fingerprints are right in front of that face as well, as well as the bark effect. And we don't want it to be on the main part of the face. So we're just going to plug that into factor. And so now everywhere that it's white on our mat it's going to put the black and everything else goes into the other section there this allows us to customize the noise textures that we're feeding into it and making sure we're only getting it where we want it to be now we'll see if that actually works well for us so we'll go back all the way up to our mix shader here go view that and yeah this is less distracting it's totally fine that's on the sides of the face and all the way around but we want it to have this area here to be pretty clean and clear um 
which I know our reference image doesn't have that, but I, I think that it looks a lot better this way. Okay. Uh, our main face that we have, let's go look at that real quick. I think it's fed into this mix. I don't like how the eyes got so light here. Um, as it's mixing it. I would probably say let's do this as a screen maybe. Or as a plus. Or like an add. So there's this guy. And then there's this guy. I think I would rather this just get plugged directly into the base color. Yes, definitely prefer that. It's feeling a lot better. Um, overall, I think that some areas feel a little smooth to me. Let's see if we can find a surface imperfection that works to fix that. A lot of little layering of different things, honestly, is what this comes down to. Plug this value in to the scale here. I do like the size of that, but I'm going to want a lot of it. Um, so let's 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 do this. Uh, let's use a mix color node, and we're going to be mixing these on top of each other, essentially. So let's just take this whole thing, duplicate it, move it down, and feed that into the B option. And if I do 0.5 on X and Y here, let's see what this looks like. Instead of mix, let's do a add. And then what this is gonna allow me to do is move my second section of this. We're just going to try to cover as much of this face as possible. And we can keep doing this as many times as we want. We just basically have to just stack these. Just fill in this last section if I can. Okay, that works pretty well for me. So, uh, yeah, it works pretty nice. So now we've got like this kind of wooden texture that's going all the way around. I mean, it's just the fingerprints uh, principle, uh, sorry, the fingerprints texture uh, that I picked from my Surface Imperfections pack, uh, which is available on my Patreon, by the way. So if you guys wanna grab this, the best bet is to get the uh, Render Raiders tier because then you'll get all of these project files, but you'll also get access to all of the different content files that I create. Um, but yeah, so let's take this and we're gonna just multiply this. Let's take a math node. I'm gonna multiply this value here against this value here. So what we're getting is this times this, which then gets placed into your overall image scheme. So now we should be getting that kind of wooden texture everywhere throughout the entire image. And uh, the only other thing we could do now is this needs to be added on top of all of that. So we could do our multiply here. Hmm. I'm actually thinking, let's use our mix color again, but we're gonna take this input and the input from this mix node here, 
And with the factor, we'll just set that to 100 and say plus or add. And then this can get fed all the way back to this section here. Great. I like that. I do like that. Let's go ahead and save that. Um, and there's our head that we did. So we can start to apply this to some of the other areas of the body. Um, so this material here, we'll just call this head. And then let's select the head here, but we're going to probably duplicate it and change it because it's going to create all of these uh, artifacts here that we don't want. So just duplicate that, call this torso. And the reason it's doing that is because we're feeding in this face texture here into our main base BSDF. So we can actually just unselect that and it'll fix our problem. We will probably want to paint our own thing on here. So we could do that pretty easily um, because instead of unplugging that face, we'll just replace it with a texture that we want. So right now, instead of this face texture here, we're going to want to create a new torso texture. So let's go into our texture paint. And we're gonna say image, new image, and we'll call this torso. And that's totally fine. Let's set everything's default to white. Let's say new image. Now, if we go back to layout over here, I can select torso. We could just plug this into our principal BSDF, go over to our texture paint, and we can start painting on using uh, you know, one of the masks that we had created from before. This will make it a lot easier. Yeah, I mean, I already have these kind of sculpted lines on here, so we just need to basically paint on top of that. I'm just kind of creating the initial dark lines here, and then we can go in and create kind of like the splatter effect afterwards. And yes, I am painting with a mouse right now. Overall, that's pretty good. And then we'll just get some of these bigger cuts up here. That works pretty well. And I mean, that's not including all of the other little scrapes and stuff we've got going on. So let's go ahead and save here and see what that looks like. So we'll save that into the folder, go back over to layout, load that image in. Ooh, we're viewing the wrong thing. View this mix shader there. Not bad. Okay, guys, I'm actually going to pause. Uh, this stream's going a little bit long, and uh, we could probably work on a lot more shading stuff next time. So we'll just pick up from ne here next time. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think this is a good pausing place because uh, there's still quite a bit to do. I mean, we have a lot to fix on our characters as well. We have to do the hair. We have to do the rest of the scene. 
We still haven't even really done lighting. And then, of course, that that we have composite to do as well. So uh, I think I'm going to pause this stream here. And we will continue uh, this character next week on uh, next Sunday. But if you guys are new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We do weekly live streams. And we will be doing a uh, live stream coming up um, this Tuesday where we're going to do a visual effect shot. So if you guys are into compositing, and you want to see that stuff, then we will be jumping into that this coming Tuesday, and then we will be back again next Sunday to continue this stream. But uh, thank you guys for for dropping in and hanging out today. It's been fun. It's been exciting. Uh, it's certainly been a process, and we are slowly getting closer and closer to finishing this model. But this is a fun one. I mean, I don't get to do uh, things like this all the time. So I'm really excited to see where we're going to go. Yeah, after about almost five hours, I think it's a good call. I didn't eat lunch either. So I haven't eaten breakfast or lunch today. And it's currently 545 right now. So I am decently hungry, guys. I am decently hungry. But hey, if you want these project files, I'm going to upload this to, uh, to Patreon right after this stream is over and you guys can go grab it mess around with it and we'll be back next week to continue it so if you guys want to follow along next week that would be awesome also make sure to join the discord link in the description and you guys can uh see when we're going live and when new videos are going up and all that stuff but uh i will talk to you guys next time thank you so much for joining and i will see you guys tuesday at the earliest all right you guys have a good one peace out <laughs>